is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. And good afternoon, 2.03 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. And uh, a little bit later, I'm going to tell you why deploying the National Guard to the Mexican border may not be a good idea. And I think after you hear my position, you might agree. As uh, most of you know, Trump has ordered the National Guard to the uh, Mexican border immediately, right? They're in conversations with the uh, border state governors, as they should. The Department of Defense and the Department of Homeland Security, they've been directed to work together with the governors to deploy the National Guard immediately to our southern border with Mexico uh, to assist the Border Patrol. We do hope the deployment begins immediately. Now, in just a little bit, I'm going to tell you why it may not be a good idea. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, you're a liberal. You don't care about the kids. Okay, stop. I think after you hear my position, you might just agree. I, I think Trump needs to be very, very, very careful with how he plays this out. You know, I just saw his approval rating went up to 51%. <laughs> what is CNN talking about? Oh, uh, his approval rating has never been lower than it was in March. Well, what about right now? I don't know, but let me tell you about March. Um, yeah, I, I'm just about sick of it. And Coulter, who uh, I've done several shows with. We used to do some live shows. Uh, Mark Levin, myself, and Coulter, um, you know, a country band du jour. Um, and Sean um, across the country. And when you see Ann on television, she's exactly the same way when she's not on the air. Um, but I'm going to give you something that she wrote. We've reached out to Ann. She's extremely busy. But um, I'm going to read you. I very, very seldom read to you from a prepared text. I normally don't do that. Uh, but when something hits me, I mean, hits me square between the eyes, um, I want to share it. Now, I'm under no illusion that people in my audience can't read. I'm, I'm fully aware that most of you can read for yourself. Uh, but you may not have run across this. So um, I'm going to bring it to your attention a little bit later in the show. Also, also, you know, I'm pretty hard on the state of California, primarily because, uh, you know, I broadcasted out of Southern California for almost 17 years, 16 and a half years, even though I flew back and forth from here to there every 10, 12 days. You know, I would stay there for 10 days at a time. And, of course, um, you know, I wasn't going to raise my kids there. And the company said, sure, we'll we'll take care of that. Um, I, I got to tell you, not everybody in California is just walking around bumping into palm trees. The vast amount of people are, and certainly the state legislature in Sacramento. Um, but uh, one county supervisor is speaking out, and I happen to know her. Uh, a San Diego County supervisor, she's going to be with me in uh, oh, about uh, 15, 20 minutes. And we will see, we will see what this Escondido city pushing back against their own state to become the first city in San Diego to support the Trump administration's lawsuit against California, the so-called sanctuary city laws. Uh, the council voted to file a legal brief, and of course, you know, just like clockwork, the usual suspects come out of the woodwork. The ACLU of San Diego, the Imperial County strongly opposes the city of Escondido, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not everyone in Cal there may be hope for California yet. Probably not. You know, I'm, I'm, you have to look at this with... Uh, you know, some anticipation, but cautious optimism uh, to see anything good coming out. As a matter of fact, even Jerry Moonbeam Brown, the governor now, he uh, he came out and said, well, you know, this uh, National Guard thing, uh, I'll give it some consideration. 
I don't know if he'd been at the bong all day or exactly what the deal was. What, did I say that out loud? Well, it's Jerry Brown. What do you expect? Um, I don't know if Linda Ronstadt, you know, showed up with some really primo stuff. And, uh, you know, they got loose in his office and he said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll consider that. Um, he, of course, declared a sanctuary state. Um, oh, and by the way, the Oregon governor, and what I look at as a sensational move, the Oregon governor. Now, remember, we're deploying troops to the southern border of the United States. If you don't know where that is, it's you know, that's not surprising. We don't talk about a southern border very often. But if you go to Rand McNally and you look at the United States, see that line at the very bottom? That's, that's a border. That's essentially the only border we have is that little line on the Rand McNally map. Oregon, for those of you geographically challenged, is way up north. All right, so go to that little line on Rand McNally, put your finger on it, and go to California and just keep going up. Just keep going up. Just go, almost, you're almost there. Boom, you're in Oregon. The Oregon governor says, I'll say no if Trump asks me to deploy National Guard troops to Mexico. All right, sweet cheeks, here's the deal. We're not looking for the National Guard troops in Oregon to go to the southern border. This has to do with with the southern border states. You know, maybe she needs a Rand McNally. Uh, Oregon Governor Kate Brown, Democrat, of course, said she would reject, I will reject a request from our president to dispatch National Guard. It, this, all this is is, here, let me pull out my soapbox and get on top and show all the other uber liberals how, how uh, in touch I am. As the commander of Oregon's Guard, I am deeply troubled by Trump's plan to militarize our border. All right. Um, as we say in the South, she doesn't know come here from Sikkim about what she's talking about. Nothing. Okay. Oregon, uh, you know, we're going to try to pull this off without you if we can. Don't know. Pretty heavy lifting. You know, I don't know if, if Oregon uh, you know, doesn't show up. I, I don't know what we're going to do. Probably be a tsunami wave of drug cartels, MS-13, Hondurans, pouring across the border. If we just had help from Oregon, we could stop all this. All right. Uh, Oregon Governor Kate, Kate, keep your guard. You know, keep making your goofy statements. Uh, all right. 11 minutes after the... Was all that out loud? Was the mic on? Should I not have said that? Uh, no, you could say... You, the only thing you didn't say is Kate and Moonbeam Brown are going to burn one together. Well, that's about it. Yeah, that's probably true. Two, okay. Well, all that good stuff's up there in Oregon, right? <laughs> there you go. All right. 2.11 the time. We'll step aside very quickly. Check your afternoon drive. Come back with your calls. And uh, San Diego uh, County Supervisor coming up here in just a little bit. Don't forget... We give you another chance to pick up $1,000 within the show here. So uh, keep that in mind. 2.11 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk, 820 WBAP. All right, 16 minutes after the hour. You know I was going to put this off till uh, after the bottom of the hour. I, I don't see any need to do that. As you know, Trump has ordered the National Guard to the Mexican border immediately. And he's, uh, he's not really being all that specific. I've got a lot of questions. As I said at the top, I'm going to tell you why deploying the National Guard to back up uh, the Border Patrol may not be a good idea. And I know a lot of you are saying, what? What, 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 are, you, what are you talking about? Well, I got this out of Mexico. The Mexican Foreign Ministry has said that the U.S. Home, uh, Homeland Security Secretary, um, Kristen Nelson, has told Mexico, their top diplomat, that the U.S. National Guard troops being deployed to the border will not carry arms or carry out migration or customs control activities. And I read that, and then I read it again. You know, a foreign ministry statement issued today no, actually, it was last night. Said Nelson told uh, the foreign minister that troops will only be providing support for the Department of Homeland Security. She said it will be very similar to the deployment uh, in 2006 under President Bush and in 2010 with President Barack Obama. I've talked to some of those guardsmen. 
they walk around, around with uh, rifles and no ammunition. Now, I'm not worried about Mexicans trying to come here to feed their family. What I'm worried about is putting guardsmen on the border in large numbers with no way to defend themselves. Now, I would imagine many of you have not been to that, that border. I have many times, especially it was been about five, six years ago. The cartels were getting a, a little lean, so they came in to as far north as Tijuana, which is, I mean, right across from San Diego. And they would hang bodies, beheaded bodies from the overpasses. They would uh, then uh, take the heads and put them on f- fences of those people they had problems with. So to say I'm going to send all the guardsmen down uh, to the border to be mechanics and do that kind of work so it frees up the border patrol, uh-uh. If, if my son or daughter was a guardsman, and they said, we want to deploy you to guard the southern border until a wall is built, I'd say, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, and by the way, you won't be armed. No, bad idea. Like I said, I'm not worried about the people trying to come across to feed their family, taking out a guardsman. But those are not the only people trying to get here. There are drug cartels. There are gangs that are hired, hired by the drug cartels. Um, I mean, the, the, it's horrific south of the border. And see, the press doesn't, doesn't put that out like they should. Even the San Diego press doesn't put that out as they should. Because, oh, yeah, hey, look, come on down to San Diego. It's a great vacation spot. And while you're here, don't forget to go to Tijuana, buy some crap because that's essentially what it is. Uh, it is da- You take your life in your own hands anytime you go down there, period. And I'm not being sensational. That's the truth. So to deploy National Guardsmen without any way to de- defend themselves against a, you know, a, a cartel gang or the cartel themselves or um, people smuggling dope or smuggling other people, that makes absolutely no sense to me at all. And I would be against deploying the National Guard from California and Mexico, Arizona, Texas. I would be against that if they had no way to defend themselves. You know, Trump signed a proclamation earlier today ordering the Secretary of Defense to support the Department of Homeland Security in securing the southern border to stop the flow of drugs and migrants. Okay, well, that sounds good, but I need some details. Are they going to be directly there at the border like the Border Patrol uh, are right now, driving back and forth across, um, you know, pretty, I mean, even the Border Patrol will tell you they don't go out by themselves at night. You just don't do it. There are too many people uh, with uh, too many drugs and too much other illegal um, paraphernalia. They don't mind shooting a Border Patrol agent at all. So you put the National Guard out. Well, what difference does that make? Oh, they're going to be mechanics and they'll support the Border Patrol. Um, um, that way they'll be freed up to do other things. They will not carry arms or carry out migration or custom control activities, according to the Mexican Foreign Ministry. I'm not getting that same message from Washington. Uh, I haven't heard anything about that. I think it's time to be specific with the American people. If you want to send the National Guard troops to the border to face whatever comes across, unable to defend themselves, no, I'm not for it. Would you be? I wouldn't. Doesn't make any sense. None at all. As soon as the drug dealers and cartels and all the all the rest that we don't want in this country, as soon as they find out, yeah, they've got a bunch of guys in uniform, but nobody has uh, any firearms, eh, it's just more people. We'll go down here. I'm sorry. I would not be for that. And I think uh, Trump needs to answer the question, will the guardsmen be armed? If not, I would suggest to these governors, why would you deploy them? Why would you do that? That makes no sense. Would would you go to the Mexican border in the dead of night 
with a flashlight and a cell phone? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it for a minute. You know, maybe it comes from 16 and a half years um, broadcasting as the crow flies about 20 miles from from the Tijuana crossing. I wouldn't do it. I, I, I No. All right. We're going to find out what you think. Um, are you still in favor of deploying the National Guard to, well, you know, Trump said it. They're going to guard our southern border until his wall is built. Well, what are they going to do? Throw rocks at the cartels? I mean, these are some of the most evil people you can imagine. Ask the DEA what they've had to deal with. They're field operations people. The last thing you want to do is get caught. Well, ISIS is bad, there's no doubt. But you face uh, some of these uh, cartel gangs, they do it with chainsaws. It's not a, it's not a pretty thing at all. So... I'm sorry. If uh, you're not going to arm the guardsmen, I would be dead set against any guardsman going down there. Does that make sense at all? It does. David, does that make sense to you? You're a former military guy. Yeah, you know, I've been to Tijuana a couple times, but I got out of there as soon as the, oh, it's, as soon as the sun sets. you got to be out of there. It's uh, it, Yeah, or, you know, broad like, daylight, you get pulled over. You get pulled over by uh, by people. You don't know if it's a real cop, fake cop, cop on the t- You don't know. You know, their their military is corrupt. Their police agencies are uber corrupt. So you don't know if you're getting stopped, if you're going to be robbed, raped, assaulted. Uh, I've talked to plenty of families that have been stopped, set out on the side of the road, their truck and uh, trailer gone. Well, who do you go to? The police? (laughs) They were the ones that supposedly stopped you. I mean, I can't stress to you enough how dangerous the southern border is. I, I, it's, and I, I'm not talking about those people coming up here to pick strawberries or blow the leaves off your lawn or, you know, put their kids in a school where they can actually eat. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the vast, vast number of people. Um, they're involved in illegal activity. No, I would not be for deploying the, uh, the guardsmen to the border without a way to defend themselves. We'll take your calls. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. I'm Rick Roberts. News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, at 2.32 the time. As most of you know, I spent uh, about 16 and a half years uh, broadcasting out of uh, San Diego, California. First with KOGO and then uh, KFMB for, gosh, I think 15 years of it. Um, You know, great weather, uh, a great town to visit, um, and and quite honestly, I met a a lot of great people. We started the Warrior Foundation out of Balboa Hospital there. And people just came through like you wouldn't believe. I think we raised over $17 million, 16 or 17 over the course of four or five years. Helped out a lot, a lot of vets. Um, and I, I, I made a lot of friends out there and people that I respect. Uh, and believe it or not, some of them were politicians. Um, I know here in Texas, even though we're the fifth largest radio market in the United States, You know, a lot of people don't know about Californians other than, you know, the ones moving here that got out. Escondido, Escondido, just outside uh, San Diego proper, the Escondido City Council voted uh, four to one to become the first city in San Diego to support Trump's administration lawsuit against California's so-called sanctuary city laws. Because quite honestly, whether you're sitting here in Dallas or you know, sitting in uh, uh, the studio in in San Diego, I still uh, can't fathom why people want to welcome illegals. You know, it could be political. The more people there are, the more representative uh, you get. Uh, Who knows? The council voted to file a legal brief in support of the lawsuit. Um, The matter was put on the council agenda by the mayor and uh, Councilman Masson, I think. Uh, And then, of course, the usual suspects come out. 
the ACLU of San Diego, uh, and a lot of others um, talking about immigrants. Well, there's no problem if you're an immigrant. If you're an illegal immigrant, then there's got to be something to be done there. Uh, the San Diego Board of Supervisors on April 17th planned to discuss um, this case. Uh, County Supervisor Diane Jacob said she expects the board to vote at least three to two to join the lawsuit. Uh, and Diane Jacob, Supervisor Jacob, joins me now. It's been a long time. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Rick. It is so good to hear that great radio voice of yours. <laughs> well, I miss you. Oh, well, I miss I miss San Diego, you know, from time to time. But I love Dallas; it's home. But um, sure. yeah, I, I was so glad to see you come out. I think I saw you on Fox News the other day. Um, you know, tell me tell me what this is all about because this is the first city in San Diego to do this, right? Uh, Orange County. Uh, well, yes, Escondido is the first city to join the federal lawsuit against the state of California, and then Orange County. Um, a little over a week ago, um, Board of Supervisors came out supporting the federal lawsuit. And there's more cities in California that are jumping on the bandwagon. And I'm very hopeful and cautiously optimistic that my board uh, all takes us three votes, as you know, but my board will also join the federal lawsuit. So, I mean, to put it Simply put, what we're talking about are people who are illegally crossing our border and they're committing crimes. And hundreds of those individuals are just being let loose again and most likely to commit another crime. So this is a major public safety issue. And what has occurred because of California's recent law that came into effect in January is it impedes the ability of local law enforcement to work with immigration law enforcement with these criminal aliens who are illegally in our country. It, it's also a constitutional issue and the rule of law. And there are some, Rick, as you, I'm sure you well know, in the Constitution of the United States, there are some rights that are delegated to states. This is not one. In fact, it goes back as far as the late 1800s where it was made very clear that immigration laws are the exclusive authority of the federal government. So I'm very anxious to get this issue into the courts and go all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court because, frankly, the state of California has become a rogue state. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're just passing laws right and left, flying in the face of, of the Constitution and, and federal law. And that has to be stopped, and this is a good one to stop it. You know, it's been a while since I was there, but I, I remember myself, Richard Reardon, and about four or five other people would meet uh, Schwarzenegger in uh, random banquet uh, rooms over the weekend to plan the strategy for Governor Gray Davis's recall uh, when he wanted to give illegals driver's licenses. I you know, I shook my head then, and then when I saw Jerry Brown get uh, get elected, I, I shook my head. It's like, wait a minute. Uh, but then I hear what you're doing. I hear what San Diego or Escondido's doing, Orange County's doing. Is this perhaps, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic, but is this perhaps a new direction, a new movement in the state of California uh, to get on the right side of things instead of, uh, you know, everything's okay all the time? Rick, Rick, I hope so. And remember how we worked on the sexual predator issue years ago. Right. I, I really believe that our, our current governor and probably the next governor is out of sync. Well, I hope not the next governor, but this one for sure is really out of sync with the people in California. And particularly when we're talking about people's safety, more and more people are being criminals are being let out of our state prisons and, and our jails as a result of state laws over the last few years. And I'm, I'm very hopeful that this is just the beginning of setting this state straight. And, re, and remember, we had to pass Megan's law. Yep. We had to pass Jessica's law in this state to protect law-abiding citizens against these sexual predators. So the people and the voters 
had to step up. Not the state legislature. They just sat on their hands. Uh, and there's, <laughs> there, you know, there, there's, there's, there's a, a well, it, it's, it's a sad situation, in my opinion, in the state of California. And so it, it's really time that uh, uh, they're taken to task. You know, I recall uh, talking with the county supervisor, Diane Jacob, uh, from San Diego. Um, I recall when I first went to San Diego, uh, I think it was 2000, 2001, something like that. No, it was probably before that. Um, and I went there from Dallas where I did Rick's Top Ten. Now, it was a top ten list changed every week of sexual predators living in the community, the names, addresses, and so on. Um, and I got to California, and I mentioned that, and they went, what, are you nuts? And I said, well, it's public domain. I had to go to Sacramento um, to to basically make my case before the state legislature, not once but twice, and every time I was told, well, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. And finally, I just got frustrated and said, okay, somebody here, tell me what the cost of the innocence of a child is, and I'll start from there with a fundraiser, just dead silence. Uh, and we eventually got it, but we got it with your help, Bonnie DeManis's help, um, and, and I miss her a lot. She uh, She's just a great person. But, uh, you know, it was like California was so out of touch with the rest of the country. So when I saw this, you know, I thought, okay, maybe, just maybe, um, this state is starting to turn a corner. And then when I saw you speak, I thought, well, we got to talk. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, yeah. I hope the state is turning the corner. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll I, I think we're going to find out this year in the election, certainly. Uh, we'll, we'll be electing a new governor and, of course, uh, legislators also. So we, we shall see, but it's a lot of work, as you well know, for the people to run an initiative campaign. It costs a lot of money. And uh, But back to this issue, uh, immigration, as I said earlier, it's a public safety issue, and there's nothing more important than keeping people safe and neighborhoods safe. And, and there is a difference between people legally coming into this country and illegally coming into the country, and I certainly support legal immigration. Um, our country is made up of, 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 of immigrants that have come to this country from all over the world, but they've come through a legal path. And so when you support illegal aliens, whether it's driver's licenses or, or what we're talking about today, what California has put in place, you're, it flies in the face of the rule of law, the Constitution. So this is a huge issue, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm just hoping other counties, we have 58 counties in California, and, and we have hundreds of cities, and I'm hoping that this is just the beginning of a groundswell against what the state of California is doing in this case, and maybe others will follow. Well, we're going to keep an eye on it because, um, you know, whether it's good or bad or indifferent, um, so goes California, then so goes the, the rest of the nation in some cases. Um, with the exception to that would certainly be Texas. Uh, we kind of view ourselves as a separate nation, but that's a whole nother topic. Uh, County Supervisor Diane Jacob, man, it was great to talk to you. I wish you nothing but the best, and we'll uh, we'll stay on top of this in California. Thanks, Rick, and great talking to you, and best of luck to you, too. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, County Supervisor in San Diego, Diane Jacob. We'll step aside, check your afternoon drive, and come back to your calls on News Talk 820 WB. I'm sorry, but people are, uh, man, the hate mail is flowing uh, like free wine. You know, uh, what are you, a pacifist? What do you, no, I'm the exact opposite. Why would you want to send a National Guardsman to the border to guard the border with no way to protect himself. If you're not going to arm them, why are you sending them? All right, and your chance for that $1,000 coming up uh, during the show today, and uh, hope you win it. My thanks to uh, San Diego County Supervisor Diane Jacobs, you may have seen her, on Fox News uh, talking about the fact that uh, Escondido, California, which is north of San Diego proper, um, has become the first city in San Diego to join President Trump's lawsuit against their own state. 
Uh, of course, Orange County has done the same thing. You know, maybe maybe California has hit uh, critical mass, the point of diminishing returns for the uber liberals, and maybe they're taking a turn. Who knows? Um, a lot of you pretty upset with me uh, because of what I said before Diane came on, which was I would not be in favor of sending the National Guard or any form of the military to the southern border, in Trump's words, to guard the border until my wall is done. Well, they're going to be there a while. And unless this is a Boy Scout camp out, um, they need to be able to defend themselves. I, I've never understood, you know, we're going to deploy the National Guard, but uh, the bolts out of the rifle, they're just, what? what is it, just for a show? I'm sorry, I have seen the death and destruction that comes out of Mexico, especially out of Tijuana, um, and no, I would not be in favor of sending anyone, civilian or military, uh, to the border without some way to defend themselves. I just wouldn't do it. All right, let's go to uh, Marcus. Marcus in Irving. Marcus, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Pretty good, Rick. How are you? Good. Uh, I just want to tell you that in 2007, I was down on the border for a year. I was with 372nd Alpha Company over off Redbird Lane in Dallas, and I uh, was deployed with the Border Patrol for a whole year there. We carried nine mils and M4s, and we were locked and loaded. We got issued guns and uh, ammunition every night that we went on duty, and I worked from 3 to 11 down there. We had one Border Patrol agent per eight people. We had two M4s with us, and everybody had nine mils, and we had ammunition locked and loaded every time we went out. Yeah, I got no problem with that. At least... You know, we're not throwing uh, the guard to the wolves. Uh, I mean, I, I've read what the Mexican uh, ambassador has said that he was told by Homeland Security. He was assured that the guard would not be armed, but they would be there in a supportive role for the Border Patrol, uh, being mechanics or doing some of the – well, that's that's nuts. That doesn't make sense. Well, a lot of us did that too, but there was a lot of us that were deployed – to work with the border patrol agents down there and uh like i said we did everything that they did uh so i don't know what he's talking about what he's talking about because there's no way they're going to send national guard down there without giving them weapons on the border because it's dangerous well tell people tell people how they i mean i know i broadcasted 20 miles from the border i know how dangerous it is i've seen the bodies pictures of the bodies hanging off uh the freeway overpasses. I've seen the beheaded uh, heads of uh, stuck on a fence. Uh, these are all messages from the cartel and the drug gangs and all the rest. Um, so to send people to the border, anyone, National Guard or anyone else, unarmed is is nuts. Well, it is nuts, and I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to be armed. Well, if they're not, I would be dead set against it. I'm in, total agree, I'm in total agree with you. Hey, listen, thanks for the service. I appreciate it. You know, negotiations are continuing with, uh, continuing with the governors of the border states. Um, and according to the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Nelson, uh, and she said today, the way this process works, we work with the governors and the National Guard Bureau. The, the idea is to choose different mission subsets that the National Guard can perform to help our border patrol. Okay, well, that makes sense. So we have a variety of recommendations that we've made. Now, Nelson also said she's spoken with the governors involved and will speak again today. The idea here, of course, is for this to be effective and productive. She also said she's spoken with Jerry Brown. That probably was, you know, an hour she won't get back in her life. Um, but I, I I also, I have to look at this um she said the National Guard won't be making arrest, stopping people, investing crime or investigating crimes. Uh, we uh, need a lot of mechanics, a lot of support functions that will free up the border patrol. Okay, I get that too. Now, as far as being armed, that should be a given, right? Well, unfortunately, Mexico came out, the foreign ministry, said the U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Nelson has told Mexico's top diplomat 
that the U.S. National Guard troops being deployed to the border will not carry arms or carry out migration or custom control activities. Okay, that's enough for me to say, okay, everybody hold the phone. Stop. Let's, what is the truth? You know, the Mexican Foreign Secretary, Luis uh, Vidigare, is in Washington on a visit, and a foreign ministry statement issued last night said Nelson told him that the troops will only be providing support for the Department of Homeland Security and will not be armed. I, I'm i sorry. If that's the case, forget it. Somebody needs to come out from Washington and answer a very specific question. Don't tell me you're going to militarize the southern border. Don't tell me you're going to deploy the National Guard like Bush and Barack Obama. Don't tell me that. And then tell me, but they're going to be mechanics. I don't know, take out some trash maybe. Uh, but they won't, uh, they won't be armed. Well, first of all, why would you even make that statement? You know, every drug cartel, gangbanger, and every... Well, then what have they got to worry about? Well, th- that makes no sense. Um, all right, uh, 2.54 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. We'll find out what you think. Um, an unarmed guardsman at the border, would you be in support of that? This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, 3.04 the time. You know, I've done some digging on this. In June of 2006, it's a file photo, the Utah National Guard soldiers were working on extending a border fence in San Luis, Arizona. Now, as you know, Trump has said that he wants to use the military to secure the U.S.-Mexico border until his promised border wall is finished. The Department of Homeland Security and the White House did not immediately respond to requests for comment. At the Pentagon, officials were struggling to answer questions about the plan, including some very rudimentary details on whether it would involve Guard members, as similar programs in the past have done. But officials to be, uh, I think they were considering a model similar, and they came out today and said as much, to a 2006 operation in which former President Bush deployed the National Guard troops to the southern border to increase security and surveillance, right? Well, hmm. The latest on President Trump and immigration um, leaves a lot of questions, doesn't it? The Mexican Foreign Ministry says U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Kristen Nelson has told Mexico's diplomat in Washington that the U.S. National Guard troops being deployed to the border, I'm quoting here, will not carry arms or carry out migration or customs control activities. The Mexican uh, Foreign Secretary is Luis Vidagarra, I believe, is how you pronounce that. Uh, Like I said, he was in D.C., in Washington, D.C. A foreign ministry statement issued yesterday, well, actually it was last night, said that she told him that the troops will only be providing backup support for the Department of Homeland Security work. It will be similar, they say, to the ones in 2006 under President Bush and in, what was it, 2009? No, 2010 with President Obama. Uh, I'm, I'm only going by what I'm, I don't have an inside source. I don't have a deep throat uh, in the Pentagon. But if you're going to send the National Guard troops to the border to take out the trash and, you know, turn a wrench on a few trucks um, and not give them weapons to defend themselves against some of the most horrific gang violence and cartel violence, then I'd say no. (laughs) Forget about it. Just no. Uh, Maddie in Arlington. Maddie, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Hey, what's up, buddy? What's going on? Uh, Same jazz, different day. How about you? Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, I think what uh, President Trump is doing with the National Guard, I I really think personally it's a it's a suicide mission for the National Guard. I mean, you're sending these guys 
in with no weapon, you know, absolutely with here I am, you know, with my hands up, what are you going to do? You know, you have these cartels heavily armed. And um, like I said, Rick, I, I, I appreciate your, your, your radio show. Do I agree with a lot of things you said? Uh, yes or no. But at least you're, you're realistic like me. And this whole immigration situation has to be, uh, what do you, uh, you know, they have to be a resolution. I'm, I'm a TPS holder, Rick. I've been here 30 years. I came here when I was 80 years old from El Salvador. And um, I appreciate what America has done for us regarding the whole amnesty, you know, uh, when President Bush gave it to us. Um, Obama gave to us, and now Trump is taking it away from us. I'm here, you know, legally working with my TPS, and I would propose uh, an idea. Maybe Rick, you you probably would would probably understand a little more. Why doesn't Trump tax us immigrant TPS holders, DACA holders, to fund the wall? Call it whatever he wants. Uh, name it. Like I said, yeah, I, I, I don't. Uh, forgive me for jumping in. I don't think the yes, funding issue um, is in play here because you know we just passed a 1.3 trillion dollar omnibus bill. Um, you know, if you spend a million dollars every day, uh, every week, every month, every year, it would take you 476 years, to, and you'd still have money left. So uh, you know, they're they're starting some cuts, which I'm glad to see. You know, he mentioned taking uh, some of that military um, funding to build the wall because it is a national security issue. I don't think the funding's an issue, uh, but what is an issue, as far as I'm concerned, don't send our National Guardsmen to the border um, with a, a flashlight and a cell phone. That's nuts. It, it makes no sense. As a matter of fact, um, good call, by the way, Maddie. I appreciate it. I just got this. Um where is it? There it is right there. I got this in from Paducah, Kentucky. Somebody listens to us on the app. Rick, I called my congressman's office and our senior senator from Kentucky, McConnell. Neither knew if our guardsmen would be armed or not. Under Obama, they were sent there to relieve the Border Patrol of having to do certain clerical and surveillance work. What a waste of training for guardsmen. It, uh, you know what? I'm not even concerned about that. I've seen the violence at the border, a border up close and personal. Uh, as a matter of fact, David, uh, he's on the phone, but as soon as we get into this next break, I, I've got some some questions. Um, I, it's just it, that's a that's a deal breaker as far as I'm concerned. Uh, let's go to uh, Mike in Dallas. Mike, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Mike? I'm uh, doing good, Rick. Doing good. How you doing today? Good. Hey, um, you know, I was a security guard. Uh, few years back and uh, i'd kind of look at these troops as uh, security guards and they told us they said look uh, you don't have a weapon so don't engage anybody if any if you see anything anybody with any kind of weapon or anything call us and we'll have somebody over there right away um the police over there right away and i don't see these troops as any different than that they're the eyes and ears if something happens call somebody up you can have somebody with a helicopter they could get over there in a matter of just a few minutes and take care of the situation. But what they need are eyes and ears to um, patrol the area. And, uh, you know, so I, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. I, I don't think we need to have the military on the border engaging, you know, with machine guns or whatever in, in situations. I don't think that's going to really. Well, what, what should they do when they encounter and they're all over the place, by the way, paramilitary groups that work for the cartels or the gangs that work for the cartels that dismember DEA agents with chainsaws if they catch them or worse. Uh, what should we do? What should we tell a guardsman? If you see some of these people go run and hide and then call somebody? Well, they should call them up. And they, of course, they should have helicopters flying around in a matter of minutes. Have somebody over there. That's nuts. That's crazy. And or, or somebody with a weapon could be real close to the area, or you could have just one person. So the guardsman has area. an armed chaperone? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Rick, I don't think we can send the military there with, with uh, armed. So, you know, the best thing we can do is just have them be like security guards. Oh, okay. All right. Well, the guardsmen are now security guards. 
Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be a hypocrite, Mike. I couldn't disagree with you more. Um, I don't think our guardsmen are security guards. They're not, uh, you know, walking around a uh, self-storage unit at midnight, um, maybe encountering MS-13 or paramilitary groups or the cartel uh, when they get uh, to Unit 213B. Uh, this is a very, very serious thing, and you don't do it lightly. All right, well, there you go. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm looking at this uh, the wrong way. You think? Yeah. Well, that's it. Our National Guardsmen can be security guards. Seventeen minutes after the hour, three seventeen the time. Well, I've got a, uh, I've got a timeline for you. The president says uh, the situation at the border is at, in at a crisis mode. I'm not exactly sure what he means by that, but it's at a crisis mode. Um, by the way, illegal immigration is up two hundred percent, despite what you may have heard. Now we've uh, reached out to the governor's office. And we're trying to get an answer from our governor. I got a timeline about the meetings today. Um, At 11 o'clock this morning, U.S. officials say they have not yet determined whether the National Guard troops sent to the border with Mexico to fight illegal immigration will be armed. Marine Lieutenant uh, General uh, Kenneth McKenzie told reporters at the Pentagon at 11 o'clock today, it's not been determined how many, if any, of the guardsmen participating in the border security operation will be armed. He doesn't know how many, if any, will be armed. Homeland Security Secretary Nelson uh, has said she has been working with governors on the southwest border states to develop agreements on where and how many guardsmen will be deployed. You don't know if you're going to arm the guardsmen or not. Uh, I'm sorry. This, You know, maybe I'm looking at this from the wrong perspective. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm missing something. Um, I, I just got, I don't know what's so hard. I got this in on my email. By the way, if you want to email, it's Rick Roberts Show. Uh, two S's, Rick Roberts Show. Uh, at WBAP.com. Just got this in from uh, Jason. I won't give his last name. I don't know what's so hard to understand. The Guard is there to support and free up patrol officers. I guess he means Border Patrol. They will be doing surveillance and other things. You know, you got to take out the trash, maybe cook up a little something for the boys. Um, That will allow the Border Patrol to do the arresting and dealing with the, the crossers. You act like the Guard is going to be standing on the border with nothing when they might be miles from the actual border. Uh, try not to look at the, or try to look at this from another angle. Well, I, the guy they just called said they ought to be like security guards, not armed. But, the, you know, if you see something, say something. I, I'm, I'm sorry, man. That's, I, if I was a guardsman and you said, we want you to go to the border, uh, here's a flashlight and a cell phone. If you see anything, Rick, be sure and call us. I would say no thank you. I've seen the horrific violence up close and personal after working in San Diego, and that's you know, that's twenty five miles north of the Tijuana crossing. No, I I don't want my head cut off. I don't want to be hung from a overpass. What what you don't I, maybe people don't understand. It's not just the drug cartels or the violent gangs, or the gangs that work for the drug cartels, or the human smugglers, or the drug smugglers. It's a paramilitary. Paramilitary. They're all over the place. You don't know if they're good or bad until they shoot you. Does that make any sense at all? Why would you send some? Well, here's another email from Dale, uh, listening to us from Stafford, Arizona. Rick, you're correct. I was part of the Arizona Air Guard until 2008 and remember during one of those deployments when an Army National Guard unit, seems to me they were from Pennsylvania or Minnesota, can't recall, was deployed to the border. The rules at that time 
where they were sent, you got to hold a weapon, but no ammunition. It was well known and a joke for a very long time. They would on a regular basis observe paramilitary, well, there you go, paramilitary folks at or even crossing the border into the U.S., and he's right. In Southern California, those stories come out almost weekly. All they could do was call in an observation uh, to the Army or Air Guard unit from the fort to watch the Border Patrol or, or stay and watch until the Border Patrol could arrive. In one case, this guard unit came under live fire from a large cali- uh, caliber weapons and were literally running for their lives. Quietly, all deployments to the border were stopped shortly thereafter. Intel at the time seemed to be that it was either well-funded drug smugglers or the Mexican military due to the clothing, weapons, and maneuvering during the incident. Very little news of the event was ever published. Well, I've heard this time and time and time again. I know a lot of Border Patrol agents, some retired now, and they have the same stories. Send them with the order to defend the border with weapons, including air support, or don't send them. Thanks, Dale out of Stafford, Arizona. Um, all right, let's go to where are we going? Kevin in Mansfield. Kevin, thank you for waiting. Hello, Rick. How you doing? I'm all right. I love your show. I think I like you more than Rush and Mark Levin, too. Well, that's very kind of you. <laughs> uh, I I have not had this heard this question anywhere yet, but uh, we send our National Guard, Army, whoever we send down there, when they're fired upon, which will happen eventually, and one of our military guys are hit or killed, and unfortunately, I think that's what's going to happen, are we going to declare war uh, war on Mexico, or are we just going to sit back and say, well, you know, we sent them down there with no bullets, and they weren't supposed to be down there anyway? Is that, is that what's going to happen? Because uh, I was in the military for a long, long, long time. And uh, my orders were, do not fire unless fired upon. There was a couple times I discarded them orders. But I had bullets in my gun so I could take care of myself. I came home, I lived through it, and thank God I'm here today. But I'm watching this country turn into the biggest bunch of weenies I've ever seen in my life. We're sitting around talking about want to take guns away from American citizens, and now we're just going to turn the country over to whoever can flow over up here, it, 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 it just makes no sense to me, and I, I, I just can't fan of it. No, it, it, it makes no sense at all. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I, some people just don't get how, how violent south of the border is. I, I know these pacifists... Uh, in this country, well, if you're just nice to them, they'll be nice to you. That didn't work very well in uh, in Syria, did it? Didn't work very well in Iraq or Iran. Well, if we're just nice to them, they'll leave us alone. Well, you heard in that recording I played the other day, you know, would you shoot somebody that uh, was getting ready to shoot you? Nope. Why not? I don't believe in shooting people. Okay. I, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, that's... <laughs> You know, that must uh, give a lot of comfort to his wife and kids, right? Um, there's just no no need in it. But as 11 o'clock this morning, I just went through the timeline. I just pulled it out. They're not sure how many, if any, guardsmen will be armed. Man, that'd be the first thing I'd figure out. Hey, guardsmen, you want to pick up this trash over here? Hey, who knows how to fix a, a, a tank? Yeah, you want to bring your wrenches and come up? What do you do? What's that? I'm sorry. It's just, all right. Let me step aside. Eric Bushman has got the very latest breaking news, and we'll check your afternoon drive. Uh, I'm, I'm Maybe I'm missing the boat. More and more email are coming in. Maybe I've I touched a nerve with the United States Pacifist Organization. You know, there's some places in Dallas I won't go without my my weapon i'm part of the shirt tail out crowd but i'm not at the border if i was at the border i'd have 15 guns i've seen what the border is like i'm not going down there unarmed what are you nuts all right 333 the time 
God. This, we are so upside down in this country. I'm President Trump. We're going to deploy the military to the border. Okay, well, I mean the National Guard. And the border security operation will be armed. Okay, that's not quite answering the question. Border Patrol's already armed. You want to know how dangerous it is? Just ask them. You know, Trump said yesterday the situation at the U.S.-Mexico border had reached a point of crisis and uh, announced a proclamation directing National Guard deployment to the border immediately. Homeland Security Nelson has said she uh, is working with the governors of the states. Good, you should. This is the rundown on the meeting today. 1045. National Guard contingents in the U.S., and they're stating that border uh, on the border of Mexico, they are waiting for guidance from Washington. Well, that could be a long wait to determine what they will do following Trump's proclamation. The guard here in Texas said, "Well, the deployment is in the very er- early planning stages." You know, it's this is not reinventing the wheel. The guard's been called on by Bush and by. Obama, in the past, to secure the border. The border, not 20 miles from the border. Um, I, I don't have any more specifics. The governors of the border states, Arizona, New Mexico, have welcomed the Guard, saying it's a matter of public safety. Nine o'clock. Mexican senators and presidential candidates put aside their differences to condemn us and Trump on our decision to deploy the National Guard, I don't care what they think. You know, any country that leaves its citizens to live in abject poverty and bow to the drug cartels, I, I, don't, I don't have any use for them. Presidential candidate Ricardo Anya went further saying Mexico should limit anti-terrorism cooperation until the National Guard is withdrawn. Oh, that makes sense. Let's... let's uh, Hey, let's allow the terrorists to come in because we don't like your National Guardsmen. What, what are these, two-year-olds? And then at 11 o'clock today, they came out with this. The U.S. officials say they have not determined yet whether National Guard troops sent to the border with Mexico to fight illegal immigration will be armed. And I quoted you Marine Lieutenant General Kenneth McKenzie from the Pentagon today, said that it has not yet been determined how many, if any, of the Guard troops participating in border security will be armed. That's not what I want to hear if I'm a Guardsman. Uh, let's go to Patrick in Dallas. Patrick, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Good. How are you, Rick? I'm, I'm okay. A little concerned about this. You know, our, I wouldn't be. Our weak need, uh, you know, get rid of all, swing a big magnet over the country and suck up all the guns and we'll be safer. Um, I guess it extends to the guard, too. Nah, Rick, I think you're being a little excessive, man. I mean, seriously, think about it. If it was, if Obama was still president, yeah, I'd be, I'd be really concerned about it. And the questions aren't wrong, but they don't, it's a military, op, uh, military style operation, if you want to call it that, because they're not, you know, there's Posse Kumitani, they can't federalize and, and take control. But um, just think about it. Trust being president, you got Mattis as Secretary of Defense. I mean, they're going to, that's definitely been thought of. And I don't really think they need to get, I don't want them to telegraph what our uh, capabilities are going to be. Let, let, let them wonder. And there's support, there's support units. They're not going to, whether, do you think they're, they're really going to be standing on the, on the edge of the no, Rio no. You, t- you tell me, you seemingly know, so I would love you to share that information. What is the military strategy for the guardsmen by uh, by the president? What what I, I don't know. I only go I, by I, what he says. And you don't need to know. Honestly, ah, think, okay. No, no. Think right. about that. So l- about so we're basically going to try and fool the cartels. We're going to fool the gangs. Uh, we're just, I don't know if we're armed or not. I got a slingshot in the truck. Um, we're going to put them down there. That's the forgive me, forgive me, Patrick. I don't mean to be ugly, but that's the dumbest damn thing I've ever heard. Sorry, it is. That's not a military strategy. That's basically trusting blindly um, that 
the right thing's going to be done. The only the only person I trust blindly is Jesus Christ. And, you know, I like Trump. I voted for him, but he's not Jesus. So, no, I, I don't think the strategy is let's fool them and then we'll shoot them all. <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, let's go to Robert in Plano. Robert, thank you. And Patrick, thank you for the call. I uh, couldn't disagree with you more. Uh, Robert in Plano, how you doing? Hi there. How are you? Good. I talked to you before. We were talking about that little girl in Richardson that got murdered by her father. Yes. Okay, two topics here. Which one do you want to talk about first? I don't know. It's your dime. Okay. Uh, well, uh, most people don't understand Texas history and their revisionist history. You know, I've lived here since 1982. I'm obviously not 150 years old. But obviously, most Mexicans think we took their country wrongfully away from them. And generations don't agree on that. Okay, well, so if, you, if you're talking about La Raza or some of these other groups, yeah, they believe that uh, they're owed part of California, part of uh, uh, Arizona, part of uh, Texas. You know, but that's not what this is about. Well, some of them think that way, and that's why they flood the borders, because if they can't do it with guns, they're going to do it with bodies and everything else. And the other thing is, too, is I saw an article in the Dallas Morning News about five, six years ago, and you can actually Google it and look it up. There were 11,200 11, babies born in Parkland Hospital to illegal, illegal okay, well, What has that got to do with what we're talking about, I, I, Robert? I, I'm I guess I don't get it. What's the point? Uh, it is costing us money to take care of those guys, and all of a sudden Mexico can't figure out why we have to have a border. <laughs> well, and they know perfectly well why we have to have the border or the guard on the border. They just don't want them there. I mean, they're not stupid. Uh, I guess, forgive me, Robert, maybe it's me. I, I just don't get what you're talking about. We we know illegal immigration's cost. We know what's, I mean, that's old news. You know, what's happening today is that they're trying to figure out uh, the military strategy for guardsmen at the border and whether they're going to be armed. And my, for my two cents worth, if you're not going to arm the guardsmen so they can at least defend themselves, why are you sending them in the first place? Oh, Rick, all the guardsmen are going to be 50 miles off the border um, in in bunkers, working on trucks and cooking meals. You think you think that's it? I, I mean, you know, you started the conversation by saying most people don't know their history. Most people don't know how violent the southern border is. Period. You think ISIS is bad? Yes, they are. There there are some some cartels and 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 gangs that work for the cartels and paramilitary units down there that are every bit as horrifically violent as ISIS. And you're going to send the guardsmen down there to what? Get, me, get off the border. Hey, I'm going to go tell somebody. I'm going to go to, don't make me use this phone. I will. I'll, look, here it is. It, I got my phone right here. I'll call somebody. What? Uh, Am I missing something here, Lee? I think we both are. Something, something's not right. Have people been drinking the water in Plano or something? I mean, what's going on? I mean, you want to send it. If my son was a guardsman, I wouldn't. I'd say, no, you can't send him to the border without some way to protect himself. All right. Step up here, soldier. Here's your phone. And you know how to use it. And a flashlight. If they start shooting at you, sh shine the light in their eyes. That'll confuse them. They won't know what's going on. If you have a baby on our land, congratulations. That baby is a United States citizen. We're the only one. Now, Mexico has very tough policies. They can do whatever they want, which is the way it should be, to be honest. You're violating something very sacred. You're violating a border. Canada, very, very tough. Very, very tough. And Canada is very merit-based. You come into Canada, it's got to be based on merit. With us, it's a lottery system. Yeah, we, um, we put more time, money, and resources 
into dispensing lottery tickets at the local convenience store than we do in protecting the integrity of a free and open vote. He's right about that. I just have questions about putting the National Guard at the Mexican border unless you're going to arm them. Now, maybe something will come out and say, okay, they're all be armed. Um, you know, they won't be in an aggressive uh, posture, but they can at least protect themselves. All right, well, then I'm good with it. But if this is going to be some kind of political theater to keep all of us happy, I'm not for that. I'm not for that at all. Uh, let's go to uh, Ron and Granberry. Ron, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Ron? Uh, great, Rick. Uh, I've got a question for you. Okay. Uh, the, I call it uh, Democratic Syndrome. I think Republicans and conservatives are so, you know, used to having something to go against that they can't accept something that is a good thing for them. Okay, I- explain your point. Uh, say exactly okay. what you mean. The thing is, is that Donald Trump knows exactly what he's doing. And he does it for reasons maybe we don't know, but he always turns out to be right. Give me a reason. He is. Give me an example of something that Donald Trump is. How many times has he come into a situation to where everybody was against him and he was right? I don't know. This this whole conversation is not about Trump. It's about are we going to arm the guardsmen at the border? Yes, that's exactly what it's about. Donald Trump would not do this. He would not put people at the border with not armed. Well, I then mean, why, why doesn't he say so? Do what? Why doesn't he, he say, say so? Because so? he, uh, Rick, don't you think that there's something a little bit more about what's going on in the world than what we're allowed to no, know? No, that, that's, that's not an answer. Well, if, if in fact... Do you have an answer? Okay, didn't give me an answer for why uh, you think that we're not going to have any armed people at the border. Because of what they said. Who's they? Uh, the, the the foreign minister, Secretary Louis Vidiguer, however you pronounce it. Boy, boy, do you okay. have a good, oh, wow. Okay, well, okay, before you... Try to, be a, try to be a smart ass. Listen, well, listen, listen to what. That. Okay, you listen. My God. The Mexican Foreign Ministry says the U.S. Homeland Security Secretary, Kristen Nelson, has told Mexico's top diplomat that U.S. National Guard troops being deployed to the border will not carry arms or carry out mi- uh, migration or customs control activities. I just read you the timeline from the meeting today. Did you not hear what I said? Do you think he supersedes the president of the United States? Okay, listen to what I'm saying. 11 o'clock today. You you know, instead of talking, because you're just embarrassing yourself, listen to what I'm saying. U.S. officials at the meeting today at 11 o'clock say they have not determined yet whether National Guard troops sent to the border with Mexico to fight illegal immigration will be armed. Marine Lieutenant General Kenneth McKenzie said today at the Pentagon at 11 o'clock this morning that it has not yet been determined how many, if any, of the National Guard troops participating in border security will be armed. Should I not believe a a general at the Pentagon? I think you should uh, think that there's a possibility. Well, that's the whole purpose of of what I'm talking about. No, I agree, Rick. I'm just saying that there's something going on here that we don't know about. Well, there may be, there may not be. But as far as fooling a paramilitary organization or cartels or drug gangs, that's not military strategy. That's nuts. Okay, Rick, let me ask you a question. I totally agree with what you're saying. I totally agree. But what I'm asking you is, as a person, do you actually think that Donald Trump would send any kind of military action down to the border without ammo. I don't know. It's been done before. 
It was done you're by Bush. It was done by Bush. Listen, it was done by Bush. It was done by Obama. I don't know what Trump's agenda is, but if you're not going to arm National Guard troops at the border, what's the point in sending them? Well, Rick, you're you're refusing to answer my question. What is your question? My question is, do you actually think that Donald Trump, the president of the United States— okay, I got that. What, would send the troops down there unarmed? Yes. I don't know. Well, then why are you whining about all this? Because you don't know. I want to know. I want the truth. I don't want to be played like a cheap pawn shop guitar like I usually am with people in D.C. Well, it's a, you know, usually it's a cheap Chinese suitcase, but... All right. Look, we're, this is a vicious circle of dialogue. I appreciate the call. Uh, I, you know, that's five minutes of my life and yours. We'll never get back. I don't know why we even... Uh, well, what am I whining about? Hmm? I'm whining because the military needs to be armed. They're not security guards at a self-storage unit. They're not hanging out in the gap waiting to see if anybody steals a pair of pants. They're the military. And if you're not going to arm them, don't send them. Why is it that everybody believes that Trump has has all these secret ideas? They're going to just work out great. Now, why are we sitting here with a $1.3 trillion omnibus budget instead of a veto? I don't know what he's going to do. And quite honestly, you don't either. So we need to have our voices heard. We need some answers. This is our country. They're our National Guard people. We need answers. And if you come up with the secret agenda that Trump has to figure this all out, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to listen to the generals at the Pentagon. I'm going to listen to the White House spokesman speaking on behalf of the president. And, you know, if you think that's whining, then, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Oh, man, am I sure glad Eric Bushman is next. The very latest breaking news, I need a drink. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, four minutes after the hour. Just a ton of email just flooding in. Rick, you're not right. Trump's got a plan. Trump, look, I get it. Everybody wants to believe that Trump has all the answers. I get that. I voted for the guy. I supported him. Still do. But nobody gets a pass, or they shouldn't, in this country, without being open and upfront with the American people. Just because it's Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton doesn't mean that it may not be an idea that needs some tweaking. Just look at the omnibus bill. $1.3 $1.3 trillion, as I said, if you started spending a million dollars a day right now and did it every day and didn't stop, at the end of 476 years, you'd have money left over. That's never going to be paid back, maybe by your great-great-grandkids. What, what you fail to realize, this is not a monarchy. One guy doesn't call all the shots, although Barack Obama tried very hard. We don't have a monarch. He's got other branches of government to deal with. He's got the military to deal with. And the question I'm uh, posing is, would you go to the, the border without a weapon? I wouldn't. And when they tell me, when, the, when a general at the Pentagon tells me, well, we haven't decided yet how many, if any, will be armed, that leaves some wiggle room, doesn't it? Uh, I, please, don't, well, Trump's got a secret agenda. You know, he's, did you read the art of the deal? This has nothing to do with any of that. He's as capable of making bad decisions as anyone else. I think he's done quite a bit in the first year. You're not reading about it, about it in the newspaper, hearing about it on the news, uh, but I've given you a list of all of his accomplishments. I'm quite pleased with what he's done. 
but he has a tendency of saying something than having to walk it back a little bit. And you know what? That's fine. I'd rather a non-politician politician do that than give me some song and dance uh, dog and pony show on three by five cards that his political aid in D.C. came up with overnight. Now, I'm okay with that. But what I'm saying is just because the guy's name is Trump does not make him impossible. Does not make it impossible for him to perhaps need to tweak an idea before it puts it out there. We've sent guard troops to the border before with weapons and no ammunition. I don't think that's a good idea. Do you? You know, and I've got all these people, Rick, you don't understand. Rick, you're being ugly. Rick, you're being argumentative. Rick, you're being, Rick, 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 Rick. You know what? I gave you my opinion. I will always do that. And if I find out later I'm wrong, I'll be the first guy to admit it. But my opinion right now is you need to tell the American people this is not a political theater because if that's what it is, I'm pretty sure the vast majority of people in this country don't want to be played anymore like we've been played by politicians for decades. We don't want political theater. We don't want to put National Guardsmen at the border with no way to defend themselves. And as I said, this is not a monarchy. It's a representative republic. A monarchy, one guy calls all the shots. And even though Barack Obama was laboring under the sad misconception that he was a monarch, it's not a monarchy uh, style of government. It's just not. It's not going to work. So if you got an opinion, fine. And if you think Trump... He's got this, uh, you know, it's all some kind of um, smoke and mirrors, and we'll figure it out. I can only go by historic data, what other presidents have done. I can only go by what the generals in the Pentagon have said at 11 o'clock this afternoon. And I can only go by what the president hasn't said. You know, he may come out today and say, yeah, I just want to let everybody know we will not send one guardsman to the border um, and jeopardize his life. They will be armed for personal protection. I think that's the way they worded at the border. At least that's what they do with the air guard. All right. Nine minutes after the hour. Lee, am I being ugly and argumentative? I don't think so. I, I just don't get that. I know we're not a nation of pacifists. I know that. I mean, they're out there. And I'll all over the place but i don't think this nation is a nation of pacifists i know we're not in texas you know and no i don't i don't think anybody's getting ready to trick anybody hey here we are look we don't have any guns and all the waiting for the guys to come up to the border then pull the guns out of the back of their belt and start shooting people i don't think that's the plan forgive me if that's the plan i'll stand corrected but it shouldn't be the plan uh let's go to tim in dallas tim thanks for waiting how you doing tim Doing well. I just have to tell you, Rick, uh, you've heard me say before, the logic-free zone is D.C., and I think some of that uh, illness, as it is, I would call it, is spreading uh, from the top down. And I'm, I, like you, I voted for Trump. Now, I think a lot of his business acumen, but some of the things that he has pulled are beyond me. And why would you tell your enemies that you're not going to have guns with your troops? I mean, that's the impression that's out there right now. And well, according you know, to some of the callers, it's all one big, gigantic, secret military strategy, and I don't believe that for a second. No, I mean, that dog won't hunt. No. Won't hunt at all. I mean, that, anyway. that you would be putting you would be putting these people in jeopardy from day one. If, yes. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, um, you know, well, if they don't know, they'll wonder. They don't care. I mean, these drug cartels are making, you know, $100 million a day. They have the money to buy whatever they want. So the last thing you go, yeah, we're coming down. We're going to make some s'mores on the, around the campfire. We're not going to, you know, we don't have any guns. We're a gun-free zone. Uh, all you would be doing is putting people in harm's way unnecessarily. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Rick, for bringing to that. Stand by your guns and know that you've got support out there, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the call, Tim. All right. Let's check your afternoon drive. 1-800, or maybe we won't. Maybe we will. It's all a big secret. 
grit. No, I'm kidding. Uh, your afternoon drive straight ahead. <laughs> oh, I try to read email, try to answer it later, but I try to go through the email during the breaks. This one's great. This is so great. Uh, <laughs> Rick, like the LifeLock commercial, National Guard deployed to the southern border sponsored by LifeLock. Oh, we're not military soldiers. We're military monitors. We just call someone if something happens. That's pretty funny. I mean, that really is. Um, again, it seems like most of the people, uh, Trump is right no matter what he does. No president in the history of America should get that kind of pass from anyone. Not even Trump, even though I support him and voted for him. You know, you're answerable to the American people. You know, if you're going to send the troops, you're going to send the National Guard, okay. Uh, in what capacity? Don't know. Don't know. We're going to back up Border Patrol. Well, I know where the Border Patrol are. They're at the border. So everybody said, well, you know, they could be miles away doing monitoring and surveillance and this and that. Okay, that's good. They don't need to be armed for that. Listen, if you're 100 miles from the border, you need to be armed. But because I said that Trump has not given the specifics yet, people are, well, Trump's got an idea. Trump, you're Rick, you're being ugly. Rick, you need more humor, blah, 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 blah. Hey, here's the deal. Again, if, if you don't know, look it up. We're a representative republic, not a monarchy. A monarchy is a system of government in which one person reigns, usually a king or a queen, and it calls all the shots. You doesn't need permission from anybody. We don't have that. And I'm sure Trump knows that. And I've had other people saying, you know, all this is is the status quo. Throwing a bone. Uh, so the, the base will say, look what he's doing. I don't know if that's the case or not. If they go down there, well, they're going to be 150 miles from the border, inside the border, and uh, they'll be making phone calls and uh, whipping up a pizza for lunch. Yeah, then, yeah, it's political theater. If it's the real deal, if you're backing up Border Patrol, you can't do it 100 miles away. I know scores of Border Patrol agents, personally. They're not 100 miles away. Well, some of them are at checkpoints, but they're on the border. That's what they do. And if you're backing them up, I would assume you're going to be close to the border. But see, again, most of you that support Trump, and I do, but I don't support anybody blindly, anybody's capable of a mistake, even a president. Look at the last eight years. Most of you, I don't even want to entertain the thought that Trump is not 100% correct. I'm sorry. That's out of my wheelhouse, man. I don't put that kind of faith in any man. Give me the specifics. Tell me what you're going to do. I'm going to deploy the National Guard immediately. Well, before we get too carried away with that idea, exactly what are they going to be doing? Where are they and are they going to be armed or not? The American people deserve that. Uh, let's go to, uh, Roger, uh, Roger, I'm not sure where you're calling from. I'm not either. <laughs> I think I'm lost. <laughs> okay. I'm on the road somewhere. I'm coming up from Houston on six, but anyway, uh, what I'm laughing about to this whole story, because uh, when I was in the army back in 68, not 1868, uh, I was given an M14 and I was going to guard duty to protect Western Europe from a the Russians pouring through the full the gap, and but they didn't give me any bullets. And I'm looking for my bullets. They didn't give me any. And I told them, I said, hell, if Barney Five got a bullet. Even Barney got a bullet. He got one in his pocket. Yeah, what am I supposed to do, spit at them if they come through the get full the gap? I mean, it's just so crazy. And, of course, it's the Army. They're just dumb in a bag of hammers. But it all falls down from the top. Somebody above me told them, don't give them, gun, don't give them bullets. Yeah, you know they why? Because if you, if you shoot somebody, then we've got an international incident we have to deal with politically. I know, but they may, they, they may need shooting. Well, yeah, some folks do. There's no doubt. Yeah. But the reason, they don't shave their legs. The reason, you, 
Now, now you were doing good, Roger, until you went there. The reason that you don't get ammunition, if you shoot somebody, then you cause a political uh, a political incident that has to be dealt with at the highest levels of government. You know, I, I'm sorry, Border Patrol is well armed. But they even had problem getting ammunition. Some, I tell you what, you know, I've got uh, Zachary Taylor, an interview with him. It's about 40 minutes long. He's a retired Border Patrol uh, supervisor, and you wouldn't, that, listening to him, we don't, do we have time? I don't know if we have time for that or not. I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I, let me, I'll get to your calls, but we may have time for Zachary Taylor. Let's go to uh, Gene in Fort Worth. Uh, Roger, be careful driving. Gene uh, in Fort Worth. How you doing, Gene? Hey, Rick. How you doing today? How, good. Having a good. Good day. Thank you. I, I, I can I can tell the the mood is hot and, and the temperature the temperature of the blood is hot. So you know I gravitate toward common sense, uh, which is tough to do when you're dealing with politicians um, because it's a matter of uncommon sense. Uh, but you know just because uh, it's Trump does not make it a hundred percent correct. It may be. I hope it is. That's why I voted for him. Uh, but there's always room for mistakes with anybody. And the American people should not give anybody a pass or, well, I'll just wait and see. You don't do that with anybody. Well, well, Rick, I, I call them. I'm a retired Air Force pilot. And uh, I, I offer up a different point of view for looking at uh, basically what the plan is or what, what you guys are talking about with, with troops at the border. Uh, I think you kind of migrate away from the, you know, the idea of the gunfight at the OK Corral and more towards the test technical and, you know, our, our national guard forces, army and the air, air national guard, highly technical, high, highly capable. Uh, they can do a lot of stuff at the border without weapons from the air, from, uh, you know, behind the lines, if you will, if you want to use that term, uh, you, you talked about, you know, there's not much you can do from a hundred miles away. Uh, I beg to differ. Uh, our troops, uh, you know, downrange in the middle East are being supported from both the East and the West coast. Uh, by National Guard troops on a daily basis. We and don't have they, even have enough Border Patrol as it is, the num- body numbers. We don't have I enough. I agree wholeheartedly. We, we don't. They're very well trained, um, very well suited for what they do. But we don't even have enough now. So when he says, when Trump says, I'm going to deploy the National Guard to back up uh, the Border Patrol, um, basically we're giving border patrol unarmed chaperones or what is it we're going to do? Oh, it takes so many bodies to cover up a certain geographical area. You know, the border, what is it? Almost two nineteen hundred and sixty-eight 1968 miles, I think, uh, with Texas alone. Now, unless, it, unless we're all going to stand there and hold hands and create a human wall, that didn't make much sense. No, I, I agree. And, and that, that's a great point. Uh, and, and that's the, the picture that I'm trying to navigate you away from a little bit. The, you know, the oh, I know. Of, Listen, uh, uh, the, air guard, troops right there. the air guard's phenomenal, but even they are armed for personal protection. Uh, I mean, they do great jobs on, on surveillance and intel, and I, I know all that. And, uh, you know, we've got some people in the Northern Command on ships trying to uh, drug interdiction and all that. Uh, but when the president says, I'm going to deploy the National Guard to back up the Border Patrol, I take him at his word. I don't think there's some secret plan uh, someplace where we're trying to fool the drug cartels and, and the human smugglers and so on. I mean, either they're going to back up the Border Patrol or they're going to be some ways away where they don't have to worry about personal defense and doing something else. But he needs to get the specifics out to the American people. I think we're owed that. Yeah, I agree. Uh I'll, I'll, I'll make this last point, and then, I, then I'll, I'd like to listen some more for your comments. Sure, but sure, uh, you know, when when you don't have sufficient numbers, then you got to rely on other military principles, mass maneuver, and all that kind of stuff to 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 make sure that you can bring forces to bear where you need them. So, like you said, the the the, the border patrol doesn't have the the numbers that they need. So no, and they haven't had for a long time. Absolutely. So you bring in technical means to help that out. No, but we don't know exactly what the guard's going to bring. I hope they bring the stuff that they need, and if they do, put, if they do end up putting troops on the front line, I hope they bring the the appropriate tools to do that to hey, do that job. Amen. But we don't and, know at this point. So, 
Listen, I appreciate the call, and I appreciate your service very, very much. All right, uh, 428 the time. We're going to give you another chance to win $1,000 here in just a little bit. Uh, Eric Bushman standing by in the WBAP newsroom, and we'll come back and take your calls. All right, I want to get right to this. 435 the time. It's been less than a year ago. The Homeland Security Department was reluctant uh, to send helicopters on nighttime missions to aid the Border Patrol, leaving Border Patrol agents to face drug smugglers, illegal immigrants, without critical air cover. That's according to the chief of the Border Patrol Agents Labor Union, and he was testifying before Congress, Brandon Judd. An agent who's also president for the National Border Patrol Council said that unless President Trump can solve that kind of bureaucratic bungling, this was started by Obama, by the way, and he's willing to oust the Obama administration uh, red tape who botched the policies, we're going to struggle to secure the border. The helicopters are one example, just one. Judd said that when the Border Patrol controlled its own helicopters, it got the air support it needed on night missions. But after Homeland Security Department was created, what, 10 years ago? The helicopters were turned over to the Office of Air and Marine, which has been reluctant to fly the nighttime hours the agents need. There's a quote, right now, the Office of Air and Marine, they fly very little at night. So the Border Patrol agents are on their own. As a matter of fact, in the Rio Grande Valley sector, we had to use Coast Guard to fly sorties. Now, I don't know if you remember the name Zachary Taylor. He's a retired Border Patrol agent, supervisor. Remember when all the kids were flooding in from uh, Central America? El Salvador, Honduras, uh, all over the place. He had a very, very, very critical, critical view of the U.S. government in what they were not doing. I think it might be worth your time to listen to a guy that spent a number of years on the border that we're getting ready to send National Guardsmen to. Zach Taylor. I'm a retired Border Patrol officer. My main job was understanding and having intelligence capabilities about drug smuggling across the U.S. border and human smuggling across the U.S. border to bring contraband and people into the United States. That's what I did for 26 years. National security is a component of the immigration laws and the reason that immigration officers exist because the immigration laws are designed to primarily do just two things, protect national security and public safety. The component of national security is the economy and American jobs because the foundation of American society, which is the family unit, depends on jobs and the economy for their livelihood. On the other side is the public safety, which includes public health, and that is so the people will be secure in their persons and their property from outside source threats. In other words, people coming in to take over America by force or by subterfuge. Right now, Department of Homeland Security is in charge of, through Customs and Border Protection, the apprehension and collection of the illegal aliens. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention is in charge of the screening with the U.S. Public Health Service. I've never seen the CDC or U.S. Public Health Service work together with the Border Patrol at the border, ever. The agents are telling us that they're seeing some people that are obviously sick uh, with shivering type illnesses, uh, with possibly uh, uh, dehydrating illnesses like diarrhea and vomiting. But those people are disappearing. We don't know what they have, where they're going, where they're taking them. Surely they, they're being quarantined somewhere. We just don't know where. And even the agents don't know what the uh, diagnosis is of these illnesses. Tie that in with the fact that these people can come through almost anywhere in the world and are funneling into Mexico. And we already know there's epidemic uh, levels of certain diseases in Mexico and Central America. We don't know if these people are showing these diseases, if they're even being screened for them. 
The real troubling part of this is we know that in West Africa right now, there's an Ebola outbreak that does not meet the parameters of communicable diseases. Normally, Ebola virus starts in the jungle and moves into an indigenous population in the jungle, and then from there into a larger population area. What they're experiencing in West Africa in three countries right now is an Ebola outbreak in three separate cities at the same time. This is very unusual. It is almost as if the virus was planted in those three cities to infect that population. In other words, the, the virus is working in the reverse of what it has historically before it moved from the jungle into the populated area. Now it's starting in the most populated areas in those cities and working through the population. If we had a control event, I'll give you an example. Border Patrol has a drug smuggling operation and they've been surveilling it. And after the car loads up and takes off, we stop the car. And the person driving the car hands us a diplomatic passport saying they're a diplomatic uh, alien inside the United States. We stop right there. We call the Department of State. The Department of State takes it from there. The person is not prosecuted. Yes, we may or may not seize the vehicle and the drugs. The United States public never knows that happened. That's a controlled event. In this situation, where you have hundreds of thousands, literally, of people coming across the border, and you're only catching a small fraction, if you're not telling the public that 80 to 90 percent of what's coming across the border is not being apprehended, and you're putting their focus on this 10 percent that is being apprehended, only showing them the 1 percent that are 6, 8, 10 years old and appeal to the compassion of the American people and not show them the people with these serious communicable diseases, the fact that they are known gang members, they have the gang tats all over them, because they do not have a conviction in the United States, they're turned loose free in the United States. We don't know when CDC takes custody of one of these people from Homeland Security and whisk them off somewhere we don't know where, what disease they have been diagnosed with. We know it's communicable. We assume it's serious. But that is being kept away not only from the agents in Department of Homeland Security, it is part of the controlled event where America doesn't realize how serious the threat is, and they're only being shown the compassionate side of the situation. That 1 to 2 percent of those 160,000 that appeal to the compassionate side of the people of the United States. What the people don't realize, that it is putting their own children at risk. Because these children are going to be put in schools with their children. This administration and past administrations have not lived up to enforcing the rule of law with regards to national security and immigration laws. The reason we're having the press of the Central American miners is because this particular administration has invited them to come here. The problem, as I see it, and as apparently because Center for Disease Control, Health and Human Services, and Department of Homeland Security are trying to make this a control situation, they're anticipating a large national crisis. When you see that FEMA is preparing for 200 million deaths in the United States, that tells you something. When you see that the government is controlling the supply of ammunition and that basic medical supplies are in short supply in southern Arizona, something's wrong. They are anticipating something drastic. If they had enforced the law, if they didn't force the immigration law, and if they had expeditiously removed these people that came here, this group of minors, they would have dealt with this situation. The way they are reacting to it is facilitating and inviting more of the same. Then, of course, uh, retired Border Patrol uh, uh, supervisor, Zachary Taylor, 
Uh, I got to step aside very quickly. I'll try to get more in before the end of the hour. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, at 4.49 the time. Uh, they're coming out with more details. Uh, sources out of the Pentagon uh, within the last hour says, uh, you won't likely see a National Guard soldier standing at the border with an M-16. Um, instead, they will be in supportive backup roles. Uh, they'll repair vehicles, monitor uh, sensors, maintain video surveillance, um, basically backing up Border Patrol. Well, in that case, give the Border Patrol the, the bodies it needs. Uh, I got no problem putting the National Guard at the border as long as they're not in harm's way. Uh, I, you know, having lived 20 miles away from the border for 16, well, every 10 days for 16 and a half years, I see how violent it is. It's horrible. You know, the Guard already helps in drug interdiction, but the latest call up is going to ramp up their presence on the border. The logistics, number of federal troops, where they'll be and how they will integrate with Border Patrol agents is still being worked out. And, you know, perhaps we don't need to know a lot about that, but we need to know we're not putting the guard in harm's way. Now, I've I've seen the Pentagon come out with some pretty crazy stuff. I don't think we ought to be experimenting. I, uh, I agree with Trump. We need to do something. But what that is, you know, it's not something we need to rush into. Let's figure it out. Um, and, and quite honestly, the legal immigration is up 200% from 16,000 to 50,000. Were you aware of that? I mean, that's, that's crazy. Um, so, yeah, something needs to be done. And the guard is well-trained. Uh, just don't... Uh, you know, just don't put them someplace um, unarmed where they can be in harm's way. That doesn't make sense. Um, all right, uh, Patricia, I got just enough time to get you in. How you doing, Patricia? Hi. Well, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Hello? I can barely hear you. Well, I just wanted to say Trump is the only guy we have going for us. I mean, I don't want to always listen to your show and make it always sound like it's negative towards him. As you say, we're not a monarchy. The man's doing the best that he can do for us with a Congress that does nothing. Really doesn't. Does exactly the omnibus bill? He didn't really want to sign that, but you know what? He saw enough in there for the military that we needed from the years of being depleted, and so he grabbed it. Well, you know, I look at it this way, Patricia. Uh, you can't even remotely insinuate that Trump might be making, um, you know, promises without, uh, you know, checking the account first, and people lose their minds. Uh, and that bothers me. Anybody that blindly follows any leader um, troubles me greatly. I support the guy. I think he's done a phenomenal job in the last year. Uh, but you don't make a, a statement without, uh, you know, the specifics to back it up. We went through that with Obama. We don't want that again. We'd like the specifics. We'd like to know, you know, the, how the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Um, and I think that's only reasonable for the American public to, to request. But you can't even question Trump with some people without them just absolutely losing it. Um, and like I said, those, those people bother me greatly because those are the type of people that will blindly follow anybody right into the ditch. And that's not what I believe Trump is trying to do. And that's not uh, what I believe he will do. But this, this blind, um, you know, following of, of anybody, Trump or anybody else is not, is not indicative of a healthy nation. You know, what was it Reagan used to say? Trust, but verify. Absolutely. With everybody. Um, at least that's the way I look at it. No, I'm not an anti-Trumper. I've uh, said for a long time, it's time for something new. And the American people told uh, uh, those uh, those politicians in D.C. were sick and tired of playing games. Here you go. Deal with this guy. And I think he's done a pretty good job the last year. I just want more information about what's going on. All right. 4.54 the time. Stick around. Your chance to pick up $1,000 is just ahead. Then it's Mark Levin. 
I'm Rick Roberts. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether we agree or not. That's always my priority. Back with you tomorrow at 2 on News Talk 820 WBAP. Until the job gets done. That's the only way I know. It don't stop till everything's gone. Straight ahead and never turn around. Don't back up. Don't back down. A full throttle wide open. You get tired and you don't show it. Dig a little deeper when you think you can't dig no more. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know. The only way I know The only way I know I'll get on it one time